The Not So Great Outdoors contains stories of a graphic nature. Viewer discretion is advised. The outdoors are great. Except when they're not. Welcome to the Not So Great Outdoors. We're your guides. I'm Piff. And I'm Sav. And we're sorry we're late. And also, if you're watching <laughs> us on video, we're somewhere new we're again. We're in a new place. <laughs> again, we're at my house now. Yay. And you I, guys almost got a lovely half of an engagement photo. Yeah, just the bottom, though. So you could just it see like, just their arms. It would have just been like my hands on my husband's <laughs> yeah. chest. And that would have been weird. Just like a torso. Yeah. <laughs> just, just the torso, That's actually. It. Yeah. So... We're in a new place. We're in my basement. <laughs> We're figuring it out. We're figuring it out because it's our nursery is all set up. Yay! It's so cute. So the old pod lab is now the nursery, which is why we are not in there anymore. It's so cute. Yeah. So we've got that all set up. I just got back from Tennessee. Um, are we going to talk about this oh, situation? My hair. <laughs> I was like, why are you gesturing to me? <laughs> Sav, like, did a big haircut today. Hair. Yes, and I really like it, but I'm also very nervous about so it. So everybody tell her that it looks great, because it does. It's half clipped back right now, because it's been raining, like, all afternoon, and my hair hates that, so. Anyway. But yeah. Sorry we're late. Um, yeah, sorry we're late. Um, it's like, been hectic. Yeah, I just got back from our anniversary trip. We've been married three years, which is very exciting. Um, we had a great time. I'm very tired. Uh, what else did we get to announce right before your anniversary trip? Oh, Maybe. right, because I have to go to Waverly. I'm not at all excited about that. The baby is, is really going right now. Well, no. that was my digestion. I know, that was your digestion, um, but still. I can feel the baby move now. Yeah, that's exciting. So that's fun. Uh, I can't yet, which is sad. Yeah, she fine. won't be able until I'm like really pregnant. Miserably I pregnant. don't fit into any of my pants. It's a great time. I bought this entire outfit today. <laughs> all right. Most so that's recent. our catch up. Yeah, that's our catch up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let me get my nose pulled up here because yeah, let's I talk wrote, about something like a transition. Spooky. But um, so yeah, we already talked about um, sending me to Waverly, but that was how I planned to like start off because I said, "Let's cut right to the chase." <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are sending me to Waverly. Thanks to everybody who left a <laughs> no, review. No, thank you. No. I, I didn't tell Seth this. Anyone. We hit the reviews in like three days. I don't love any of you that did that. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I don't. I love you, but not really right now. I love you, but I don't like you. <laughs> but I said, I love you. I said, y'all are sending me to Waverly, which makes me wonder if you love or hate me or love to <laughs> hate me. There's that. I have to go to Waverly. She volunteered to go to Waverly because you guys did what we asked you to do. Anyway. Anyway, what spooky thing are we talking about? So, because you guys decided to show up and show out for Josh's challenge, I thought it would be fair to give you more background on the subject of the episode that got us here, the Gaines Tavern. Fun! Because you gave us history. Yes. Just but, very brief. It was like yeah. a 10 minute... Quick, like, side, yeah. side note. Yeah. So I'm going to give us a little more history and a little bit more of what made it so haunted or what makes it so haunted. Um, and we're going to talk about that. And so I thought that might be fun so that you that guys know fun. what it was that really got you here. Other than the motivation of sending me to Waverly for whatever fucking reason. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Um, man, I wish we still had a Patreon. So we'd be like, if we got however many Patreon things, <laughs> then it would pay for Sav to go to if, Waverly. Well, you can still buy us a cup of coffee. So Please, if you would like, I don't want to have to pay full price for my own torture. Okay? If you would like to help pay for the cost of Waverly for Sav, it is $100. Yeah. And or we don't make that, money actually. on this podcast. No. no. So don't. if you would like to help, you can buy us a cup of coffee. Just put it in the comments and that's what it will go to. And yeah. we always send out stickers and like thank yous and stuff yeah. if you do that. So if you would like to help pay for it. <laughs> Please don't make me pay $100 to go and be like <laughs> terrified. Uh, okay, but the Gaines Tavern, a lot of this is going to reiterate what's, what Piff told us, but um, we'll, we'll get further into it. So the Gaines Tavern is located in Walton, Kentucky. Abner Gaines purchased the 100, at the time, 192-acre property. Obviously, it's not 192 acres now. Um, and, and he purchased it in January of 1809 for a grand total of $1,666.66. That's a lot of 666s. Six, six, right? I feel like that might have something to do with it. Are we? I mean, probably <laughs> not, but I mean, maybe. I just feel like it's an it's indicator bad of bad things to come. Yeah, bad juju. Yes. 
So, and also, like, I, okay, this is really important, and I do hit on this a little bit later, but you remember when I did The Bell Witch? Yes. And all I said, like, one of the big things was the majority of what I could find was, like, legend. Yes. And not as much, like, documentation or, like, documented stuff. It was legend and kind of, like, word of mouth. Lore. And lore. Yes. Okay. It's, that's really similar in this situation. I am not surprised it was the 1800s. 1800s. <laughs> early 1800s. Yeah. So, just so we know, um, all of the resources, as always, are on the website, or on the blog. Um, we're also going to start putting our resources in our show notes. So yeah, and, like your podcast notes. So yeah. they'll also be there. Yeah. Um, but so that's in case you decide to do research on your own and you see something that contradicts anything that I say, just, I'm just putting that disclaimer out there right now. There's a lot of different accounts. The ones I chose to use and that I'm going to be telling you are the ones that I saw in at least more than one place, like at least two different places. So there you go. But actually, no, I do reference one thing that was like, I didn't see this anywhere else, but I thought it was cool. So I'm going to say it. But I, I call that out. So just so we know, don't come for me. <laughs> we're, we're taking every precaution that we can. <laughs> so anyway, um. Gaines was issued a tavern license in 1808, allowing him to run the tavern from his home. Um, there's a lot of speculation online about if the tavern, like the house that we hunted at, like if that is the original one or if there was a different house on the property. They do mention, like some cases mention that he built another house on the pro. There's a whole thing. Okay. Either way, the ground on which it sits is freaking haunted so it doesn't even matter but and people actually did die in the house where we were at so again doesn't matter but i mean it does but not really like let's move on because i saw so many and like one thing had like paragraphs debating whether or not that was the original house i'm like why why do we care because we do know people died in this one so i think some people are just really intense about the rent most random things they really are and i don't get it but okay. Anyway, moving on. Um, so it allowed him to run the tavern from his home. Um, in addition to drinks, of course, which you expect with a tavern, uh, he provided lodging, food, and horse stabling for guests and patrons. Um, the license was renewed every year or so. One of my favorite parts of the story of the Gaines Tavern is that the license read that Gaines quote shall not suffer or permit any unlawful gaming in his house nor suffer any person to typle or drink more than is necessary or at any time suffer any disorderly or scandalous behavior to be practiced in his house, end quote. All of that happened. And there was gambling and there, I mean, parties, all kinds of All of of these things happened. All of those things happened. So um, by 1818, the Gaines Tavern became the first stop in the first stagecoach line between Cincinnati, Ohio, and Lexington, Kentucky. At the time, that was over 24 hours. It took over 24 hours to travel from Cincinnati to Lexington. Um, And so the location of the Gaines Tavern was a really convenient place on the stage line for people to stop and rest and, you know, get a have a good night's sleep, a good hot meal or two, and get a drink and then be able to be on their way the next day or so. Um, and it just was a really convenient location. Uh, according to an article published by the Courier Journal, quote, known to locals as the Kentucky Hor- Horror House, I have a really hard time with that word, y'all, uh, because of a series of murders, suicides, and natural deaths which occurred in and around the two story brick building. Today, some believe the distressed souls of the dead have never left, end quote. And we are here to. Also believe that. Yeah. (laughs) And we're here to uh, attest to the fact that, yep, (laughs) something's there. Something. A couple somethings. Yeah. (laughs) Many others. Many uh, somethings. That That was the worst. Uh, And then we stayed. We stayed. And, you know. hours after that. Yeah. 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 I have nothing for you for that. I really don't. I don't know why. It was cool, though. Um. Now, 
Much like many local scary stories and horror stories, uh, there isn't a lot of documentation, like I said before. Um, and they're told and retold through word of mouth, legend, or all of those things. So I did have to rely heavily on a lot of local blogs and like local media um, and things like that. So just so you know, Courier Journal is a bit bigger. So that's kind of nice. But like they mainly talked about something else that I'll hit on later. But um, just so we know, again, another disclaimer. Don't come at me. <laughs> um, I did the best that I could with what I had. So I was fortunate enough to be able to watch the Ghost Hunters episode. Oh, you finally watched, I watched it. I, I still watched it last have not. Night. It's fine. I only watched it for this, ep- for this though, because we yeah. were going to watch it together, but I watched it. We kept meaning to watch yeah. it, um, but things, it's been busy. <laughs> yeah. And that actually, that came out earlier this year. It's a new season. Yeah. They oh. just did it. I feel like the uh, inside looked different in it than it did when it we did. were there. Yeah. They had changed. I was looking at everything. I was like, okay, this is weird. They've changed some of the decoration. Yeah. Also, they didn't go into the children's room. Interesting. Or they did, if they did, they didn't show it in the episode. Interesting. Interesting. So they were spent a lot of time in the suicide room. Yeah. And they spent a lot of time in, in the ballroom. They like identified what was the actual ballroom. Oh, where um, was that? Um, you remember the room that had the sewing machine in it? No. I think it was that main room. Like, so, like, the one with let's the big pretend paintings? you walked it, huh? The one the with the big paintings? Yes. Okay. That one. I th- I'm pretty sure that was it. I'll have to look at it again. I can't really remember. I wonder um, if the woman I saw was the woman they were fighting over then. Maybe. Dun, dun, dun. dun anyway. Dun. <laughs> um, also, disclaimer. Ghost hunters. Not to be confused with bagel bites and ghost adventures. This is the TAPS team. It's a different Are team. they more respectful? In that episode, yes. I haven't watched Ghost, Ghost Hunters in a, in a while before I watched this episode, but from what I can remember, they are a lot more respectful. And then well, what then I really appreciated like <laughs> what I really appreciated about Ghost Hunters is that they did multiple nights. Oh. Which was really cool. Yeah. I think in the episode, it's, it's at least two, it's maybe three. Okay, that's nice. So that was really cool. I should really watch that. You should. I was say, we'll watch it after this, but you you want to go home. And, I'm going to go home and go to bed because yeah, it's like almost time. my bedtime already. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so let's dig in a little bit deeper into the spooky stuff. So um, it's important to note that it would seem tragedy struck the Gaines family before they even made it to Gaines Tavern, what would become Gaines Tavern. So while traveling by sea, I don't really exactly know when or why or whatever, but anyway. They were traveling by sea. They were a wealthy family, so they were traveling by sea, and two of the Gaines children became ill with yellow fever and died. And I know that there was some debate around: was it yellow fever? Was it scarlet fever? Like, how did they die? No, no, I think we knew that the kids on the boat was yellow fever. It was we didn't know how Harriet Harriet died died in the house. We do not. We I still don't know. Yeah. Um, because even on the Ghost Hunters Adventure or Ghost Hunters Adventure Ghost Hunters episode. They just said that um, she passed away. Like, they didn't really get a lot of information on that um, from who they talked to. But so um, they got sick with yellow fever and they passed away um, and they were buried at sea. But it would seem that their spirits followed their parents home. That is an interesting way to deal with your dead children. I mean, I imagine that because it was the 1800s, it wasn't like they had a cooler in the on the boat where yeah, they could they put probably the didn't bodies have a way to, yeah. And they would just stink it up the whole ship, but those are also your children. Yeah. Yeah. Um Hi, and they were likely going to be traveling for a lot longer. Yeah. And then I wonder cuz they, they probably didn't know like a lot about how disease spreads, so they were probably nervous about having Probably infected and yellow bodies. fever yeah. was highly contagious so yeah. they were probably afraid of fun that. fact i have the yellow fever vaccine really uh-huh i, I, I did do too probably but no, no it's not like a normal one it's i had like to get it when i was going to africa oh and i mean like we only anticipated or thought that we encountered like one um child while we were there but i mean i don't think it's far-fetched to think that there's that the spirits of their children attached to their parents and then went with them to yeah. their new home but I don't know that for fact, but it did seem like there was really one. Mm-hmm. And um, there's stories of people seeing a little girl and that we that looks about five years old. So that's and that's how old Harriet was when she passed away. So that's what we think. But and it know, could be that like the children that died 
um, like stuck with their parents until their parents died and then they like, were at peace kind of situation. Yeah, they were with them. Maybe. And then a blog that I found in my research, nkyviews.com, um, had a really cool article about the Gaines family and the Gaines Tavern. And I've included the link to go directly to that article um, in the resources. They mentioned a tragedy that I hadn't heard anywhere else. This is the one I was talking about. They said that at, at one point, while Mrs. Gaines was riding her horse, and they had some company, and I guess they were probably all riding, um, she was thrown from her horse and killed instantly. I was like, dang, holy crap. And so, and then they said that that was just the beginning of the tragic things that happened actually at the property. And oh, I haven't man. seen anything else about her passing, yeah. but I was like, holy I was say, I didn't see that when I was looking yeah. either. I mean, granted, I did not look very hard, but... But still, it was yeah. weird. But yeah, that's the only... I only saw it there. So that may or may not be... Yeah, but... Historically. And on their website, if you guys go there, um, we don't have... I didn't save these and we won't have them on the blog, but um, they do link to a couple of like news articles and things when they're talking about um, a couple of the things that have happened on the property, which is pretty cool. Um, so, but I didn't see an article about that, um, but it was still pretty neat, but yeah, so, (laughs) and just to continue down this horrible rabbit hole, um, one night, so now I'm just going to kind of jump from story to story, just kind of tell you a little bit more of the things that have happened there. Um, some of them have dates, some of them do not, because I couldn't find any, so just so we know, uh, but one night, a man who was traveling, he was, his name was Benjamin Runyon, he was staying at the tavern. And when he didn't come down for breakfast the next morning, a servant was sent to check on him. Um, And they found him dead in his bed uh, from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Yes. So So, is that the first uh, suicide? That's the first one that I've read about. It's the first one in the chronology. I don't know chronologically if it was the first one. Um, I know later on um, a mayor of the town also um, completed suicide in that same room. Um, that then w- went on to be, be known as the suicide, the suicide room. room. But my first question upon reading that was, how did no one, how rowdy does a tavern need to be for no one to blink an eye at a gunshot? I didn't In even the think middle about of that. The night, like overnight. Well, he could have done it while they were like, like, he killed himself in happened. the middle of the night. No, no, no. They play. He. I didn't write this down, but I do know they were playing cards. Oh, or like they were doing. So he had been seen the night prior. I you see. know, during the evening, probably at dinner. I can't really remember. But and then they noticed when he wasn't there, and that's not a very big house. So like, no, there's not like, very I feel many like people. You'd hear a gunshot, especially like in the 1800s. Yeah, and 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 they're going to recognize if he's missing for more than one meal because there's, I mean, they couldn't have had yeah, more so than a couple like guests dinner at a time. and breakfast. Yeah. And nobody like no heard one, the shot. Uh, supposedly. This is like in Lily Blonde where she's like, you would have had to see uh, Mrs. Wyndham standing over the body with a gun in your hand to make your story plausible. Mm-hmm. You would have heard the shot. <laughs> yep. Why didn't you hear the shot? Tavern guess. What happened? What happened? I want to know. So, there's one. Um, one of the most well-known instances of violence in the tavern is the very first story that the Ghost Hunters team hears in, in the episode. Uh, they sat down with the current mayor of Walton, and he told them about a murder that took place during a ball. The story goes that Richard Harrison and William Northcutt were, quote, sweet on the same farmer's daughter, end quote. And I just love that because that's so how my family, uh, so how my family would have said it or like my grandparents. And see, he was sweet on her. It's so Southern. <laughs> it is. And I love it. And he went on to say that Northcutt ripped off Harrison's wig and showed everybody that he was bald and embarrassed him. And then, of course, this angered Harrison and he stabbed Northcutt just Stabbed him with a dagger right there in front of everyone, including the girl he was sweet on. Which I don't think is a good way I to win her heart. I don't think that's a good way. Yeah. Nope. I personally have never seen somebody stab somebody else and been like, that's a guy I want to hang he out with. attractive. Yeah. And then he also passed away spontaneously two years later. Yeah. Not in the house, but just that's another not so fun fact for you. 
Uh, and the mayor also confirmed that um, Abner Gaines passed away in the house and um, his five-year-old daughter, Harriet, also passed away in the house um, at different times, obviously, but still. Um, so just adding the death toll <laughs> up and up for this house. Um, according to the Ghost Hunters episode, there were four suicides total at, at the Gaines house, or like rather the property as a whole, because um, as we know, not one at least didn't take place inside the house. Um, and so, again, that bedroom, most of the suicides took place inside um, the suicide room, um, which is one of the more active locations. Typically, it wasn't really for us, um, but it seems like that's where a lot of people see a lot of activity. People have reported seeing um, apparitions of an elderly gentleman standing in the window of that bedroom. They see it from outside, so standing in the upstairs bedroom. And then across the house in another window, they typically see children. Children. They see a child. They see a little girl, um, which we know that to be the children's bedroom, or what we called, or were told was the children's bedroom. Whether or not it actually was, I don't know. Um, but so pretty interesting, pretty creepy. Um, they've, people have also said that they've seen the little girl walking around, like inside the house and in various different locations. So she seems to wander. She doesn't just pick one place. Like where a lot of, I like on the Queen Mary, a lot of the apparitions were like stuck in a loop. Um, she seems to be more free roaming. Yeah. And assuming that that is who we were you know, interacting with at one point mm -hmm. that was a very intelligent spirit. Yeah. So it wasn't just residual energy. Yeah. yeah. So pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. And this is one of the reasons why what I'm about to say is one of the reasons why I really do enjoy Ghost Hunters and why I remember enjoying Ghost Hunters so much when I used to watch it back in the day. Um, they speak to like local people. But so they spoke to a historian um, whose name I didn't catch, and I'm so sorry, but it's in the episode. She's great. She's a lovely woman. Um, they spoke to her, and she, she told them about one of the more gruesome deaths. She told them about a lot of things, but she, def she went into detail about one of the more gruesome deaths that has taken place on the property. Um, one night, a woman named Lizzie Rice was at the tavern visiting family. She was not local to Walton, as far as I could tell. Um, she went to the orchard that was at one time on the property, covered herself in coal oil, uh, and then set herself on fire. And this just gets worse and more. Honestly, it just, it truly just gets so much worse, so much more sad. Um, while she was on fire, she made her way back to the house. Um, and they debate, um, I don't think she actually entered the house while on fire, but the ghost hunters team seemed to have taken it that she went into the house. So I don't know if they got more information or not. I, there was no evidence of damage and there was, they didn't talk about damage or anything. So I don't really, I don't know. I don't imagine she went into the house, so, but she came back to the house and told her family, I just don't want to live anymore. Um, which is so sad. While on fire? While on fire. Yep. Went I to don't her family. think if I was on fire, I'd be able to make a coherent sentence. Yeah. So, and while on fire, she walked from the orchard to... See, but like, in my brain, she wasn't like peak calmly walking. She was like... Running. Oh, running. I'm sure. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm like sure. Like a, a flaming bat out of hell. bullet. Yeah. Just straight. Yep. Um, the historian said that at that point she had let herself burn so badly and so much damage had been done that even though her family um, extinguished the flames, there was nothing that they could do. And she later um, passed from her burns in a room in the house. They didn't specify which room in the house. Um, she said a back room. So it makes me think it was one of the ones on like the lower level. It was like immediately inside you know like back it makes me think it was maybe one of those rooms off the kitchen like back behind the kitchen but i don't know um and you want to know something that makes this already terrible tale even worse no but yes <laughs> uh the historian said that 20 years prior to lizzie oh her dad did it her dad did yeah, the we same talked thing about that yeah and that's just still so unbelievably sad to me yeah it's so sad um I feel like also like that's just the product of because like 
obviously her dad was mentally unwell that's typically like something that's passed down genetically she yeah. was mentally unwell yeah like it's like a product of when you can't get treatment because it's the 1800s and nobody knows nobody what a knows mental illness that. is and you just have yeah. like ghosts in your blood do cocaine about it do cocaine about it that's from wine and crime i <laughs> love that but i really need to listen to that yeah yes i really do but i feel like that's what happens when you have generation after generation dealing with these things and not getting help betterhelp.com i just feel like we've got to put it out there now just because yeah. we've talked about i'm that trying to think of what the other like Better online help. therapies there are like a couple of them there are therapy therapy alone in any in any capacity is very helpful and um no matter what you're not alone so please know that there's light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. And taking medication doesn't mean you're a failure. No. And don't stop taking the medication. If it if you are like, oh, it's it's better, that means the medication is working. Please that, please yeah. continue to take it. Please do not stop your medication and unless you your doctor tells you to. I haven't taken your meds today. This is your, your reminder. Meds. Please drink go take water. them. Drink water and take your meds. And eat. Um, anyway, so you all know what we experienced. Um, if you don't, definitely go check out the episode immediately before this one because we go more in depth about what we talked about. And also our guest uh, co-star, um, Josh, is on there. And so he talks about a little bit more about what um, Bourbon State Paranormal does. And so go check them out for sure. Um, but with that, I'm not going to rehash everything that we've that we experienced, but I will tell you that the Ghost Hunters team had very similar experiences to us, which was really cool. But they also had some very different ones to us, which I think is just as cool. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's really neat. And so if you have access to Discovery Plus, um, you should definitely check it out. Not sponsored, but I mean, hey. Discovery Plus. I'm just saying. Plus. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah. I love Discovery wild. Plus. I do. It was pretty wild to watch um, that episode after we went just because yeah. I was like, yep, yep. Like, um, but yeah, it was it was really cool to see them have some of the some similar experiences to us. Um, but I feel like they connected with different spirits than mm -hmm. we did, which is equally cool to me. Yeah, um, there are many, many ghosts. Yeah. And I will say that at one point, do so you remember how I really didn't like the stairs? Yeah. They stood on the stairs oh. and did a session at one point, and I was just like, no, no. <laughs> That'll be no, a no. No, 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 I did not like that. Um, and I really don't know why, because nothing happened on the stairs. But I don't know. It was just weird. And maybe it was just because it was dark, and they were very short stairs. Like, I'm short, but, like, yeah. they felt weird. And, I like, mean, there was, like, the, the angled ceiling, like, yeah. But it was strange. But yeah, definitely check out our episode before this one if you haven't listened to it yet. If you're listening most recent to oldest, definitely check that one out. It'll, um, it'll autoplay next. It will autoplay next. And if you have access to Discovery Plus, I highly recommend checking out the Gaines Tavern episode of um, Ghost Hunters of this most recent season. I think it's number four. Don't get me. Don't come at me if I'm wrong. It's like it's somewhere like that. It's like four or five, something like that. It's at the beginning. Yeah. And Gaines Tavern is in the name, so it's easy to find. Uh, and I linked it. So, um, well, I linked like the Discovery Plus, like kind of synopsis or like episode description. It lists all of those episodes because um, I didn't want to link to the actual episode in our account of Discovery Plus just because it wouldn't work for you guys. And so I thought that would be kind of that would be kind of shitty if I did that. Yeah, it wouldn't make much sense. It wouldn't make much sense. So, um, but yeah, so pretty cool. Um, it is 1,000% haunted. Oh, yeah. Um, in case we didn't already believe that. Um, but <laughs> it just kind of goes to it now show. Too. I, hope, I hope you do. It just goes to show that anywhere that tragedy strikes um, has the potential to hang on to that energy. Yeah. Which I think also leads into a lot of like, like, you know, when something happens to you and you have a really hard time revisiting that location or like you have a hard time yeah do you know and, and like energy just sticks to stuff and it it's just weird and wibbly wobbly timey wimey <laughs> stuff from dr dr who it's weird like strange but um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about Gaines tavern um, i did in all seriousness thank you guys for showing up and showing out in the challenge we do appreciate it and it really does help us a lot it doesn't help me I'm going to need betterhelp.com after I go to Waverly, <laughs> probably. No, I hope not. Um, but still, we do appreciate it. Um, 
I will not be mentioning any more locations that I'm terrified to go, though, because then you guys will use that as fuel against me. To get her to go. To get me to go. That's Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. And in the meantime, stay, stay safe, safe out there. there.